This is WKYT This Morning. Good Tuesday morning to you. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. I'm Bill Bryant. Here we are. It's Tuesday, May 3rd. Derby Week in Kentucky continues, and it's great to have you along with us. Yes, it is. Now at 6 o'clock, counting down to Kentucky's primary. We're live in Moorhead, where a former president will be campaigning for his wife. He'll be moving on to Lexington later today. Also in the news, a man has died after being hit by a Lexington fire truck. Find out what we have now learned about the investigation into that. And how a community is rallying around a Lexington police officer who is battling cancer. So have a couple of showers as we go through the day. Much cooler air filters on in the next few days as we're trying to get this rain on out of here. Now here comes some cold air. I'm going to be talking about that and also possible 30s in your forecast coming up. All right, we'll see you then. And here's the latest from WKYT News. We are just two weeks away from Kentucky's primary and two Democratic hopefuls are courting voters in the Commonwealth this week. A day after former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton stopped in Ashland, her husband is planning to crisscross the state today. WKYT's Mark Barber is live in Moorhead, where former President Bill Clinton will begin his three-stop tour just a little bit later on. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Bill. And that's right. He will be here in about four hours to try to drum up support for his wife here in Moorhead. Yesterday, as you mentioned, Hillary Clinton was in Ashland speaking with voters there. Today, it is a former president's turn. Again, he will be here trying to drum up support for Hillary Clinton as the Kentucky Democratic primary inches closer and closer. We are now two weeks away from that important day. Now, at 10 this morning, Bill Clinton will be meeting with voters here at the Moorhead Space Science Center on the University. University's campus. The event is co hosted by the College Democrats and Moorhead State Young Democrats. From there, Bill Clinton will travel to Lexington. The former president will make a stop at the William T. Young Library on the UK campus at 12.30 this afternoon. And then later in the day, he'll travel to Louisville for a campaign organizing event at the Kentucky Center for African American Heritage. The former president is not the only one making a stop in Louisville. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders will also be in the Derby Center, or rather in the Derby City. Uh, voters are expected to start showing up for his rally there at the Waterfront Park at 4 o'clock this afternoon, and then tomorrow he will also be in Lexington for a rally, and that will be tomorrow afternoon as well. Now, just a moment ago, I don't know if you could hear it picked up by the mic, but they started testing the mic out here at the Science Center. They're getting ready to see Bill Clinton here again in about four hours. We will be here for this, and remember, WKYT is your home for campaign coverage this season. If you're wondering where these candidates will go next, we'll have that information posted for you on our website, WKYT.com. So stay tuned right here on air and online. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, it is the season. We thank you very much for the report, uh, Mark. And don't forget, of course, the Republicans held their caucus back in March. Well, new on WKYT this morning, frightening moments for a Lexington woman. She says she woke up this morning to find a stranger with a knife to her house on uh, Embry Avenue near the Red Mile track. WKYT's Mike Byer is there live this morning with the details. Mike. Good morning, Bill. Yes, definitely a scary situation this morning for the Lexington mom who woke up to find a burglar in her home. We're told by police that the man broke into the house here in the 1200 block of Embry Avenue. Now, this happened just not or not too long ago, just less than a few hours ago. Police say the mom came downstairs and she discovered a man with a T-shirt over his face. The suspect immediately demanded cash from the woman. Police tell us she then gave him an unknown amount of cash and pushed him out the door. The victim told police that the man appeared. To to be drunk and that he had a plastic knife. Now, there were several kids in the house when this happened, but fortunately, no one was hurt. Now, at this time, police are still searching for the suspect. We are not giving any suspect description. Live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. Thank you, Mike. A man has died after his car was hit by a Lexington fire truck. The crash crash the crash happened on Man Award near Nichols Park Drive. That stretch of the road was closed for nearly five hours while police investigated the deadly crash. They say 23-year-old Cody Emery's car jumped the median before he swerved into the path of the fire truck. Fire officials say the crew was responding to a call and that the emergency lights and sirens were on. We tell people early on that until you get to a scene, you're not going to benefit anyone. You're not going to have a positive impact on anything on a scene until you get there. So driving is a very critical part of what we do. The victim died at UK Hospital, and the driver of the fire truck was also taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Police are planning to charge a Clay County man with murder and fetal homicide after they say he killed his pregnant girlfriend. 
Family members of Samuel Cornett say he shot Alicia Ty in the couple's home. They say she was holding the couple's two-year-old child when the pregnant mother was shot. Police say Cornett then grabbed the child and left the home before being arrested. Ty died at UK Hospital the next day. But after days of heavy rain, parts of eastern Kentucky are dealing with closed roads that are covered by high floodwaters this morning. Take a look at some of the flooding along Highway 867 in McGoffin County. People who live along the road have been dealing with high water for days now. They tell us flooding is making it hard to get around. And people are also cleaning up flood damage in Letcher County. High water covered much of Grassy Fork Road, even surrounded some homes there. One woman says, along with a muddy mess, storms also caused her roof to leak and left her without power. And a man living nearby says water ran under his trailer and destroyed the foundation. With more rain on the way, check out WKYT.com or you can download the WKYT News app and stay up to date on the weather. An Owen County family is asking for help finding a horse. Police say someone stole the horse from a farm on Canny Church Road. They think the thief cut open a barbed wire fence and put the horse in a trailer. The Belgian horse named Dandy is more than 20 years old. The time now six minutes after six on WKYT. The community is rallying around a Lexington police officer who is battling pancreatic cancer. Detective Philip Harrison is a 19-year veteran of the Lexington Police Department. Tomorrow, all Lexington area Raising Cane's restaurants will donate 20% of the day's sales to Detective Harrison. Police say a GoFundMe page set up to help Detective Harrison has already raised more than $60,000. And here's a reason to raise your glass this morning. An iconic brand of Kentucky bourbon has reached a milestone. Jim Beam filled its 14th millionth barrel of bourbon since the repeal of the prohibition in 1933. The barrel was signed by a master distiller, Fred No, and Governor Bevan at the Jim Beam Distillery in Bullitt County. Jim Beam says it's the first bourbon company to reach the 14 million barrel milestone. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Rain chances stick with us again for today. It's not extremely widespread and it's not extremely heavy rain, but it's still rain. I mean, we really don't need any more right now. I mean, we'd like to take a break, try to get a lot of these scheduled ball games in there, or at least just be outside for a little bit. But it's just one shower, one thunderstorm after another, it seems like. And, and look, right through here is where we have had a flood warning. And that goes in, in, in effect through 7 a.m. That's going to go for Breathitt County and then work your way back towards St. McGoffin, Floyd County. And we had a heavy downpour roll right through there just about 20 to 30 minutes ago in Floyd County and about an hour ago there in Jackson County, or, or Breathitt County, rather, in Jackson. So just keep in mind, more water. More running off the hills, more running off the mountains, and that could cause some flooding and a few ponding places there on the roads as you travel this morning. 55 degrees now in Lexington. We're dry for the most part. It's a little cool outside. You throw a light breeze in there out of the northwest, and that's going to bring in uh, that cool feel as you step out the door this morning. But watch as we go through the day. Watch noontime. We hit the noontime hour, and boom, there we go. Have a couple of showers rolling on in from the north. When the showers come in from the north, it's not heavy rain. It's not dealing with a lot of moisture. So, yes, you will have some showers, but remember, no heavy rain, no thunderstorm action for today. And then we head towards your afternoon, evening, if you're trying to head out to eat or get some of those ball games squared away. I know the grounds are still pretty wet, but yes, you will have at least a couple of light showers here and there. Best chance is going to be around that I 64 corridor. And northbound, southern half, you only have about a 30% chance of rain, but I'd say 40 to 60 the farther north you go. Then we head off toward the evening, and it slowly but surely fades away. Let's talk about your three day tracker. We get off into tomorrow, and a few rumbles in the forecast. I would say in your forecast now, tomorrow is going to be your best chance of rain, and it looks like we're going to have a lot of that flowing on through for tomorrow. It's just Another shot of showers and thunderstorms. No severe weather is expected. Thursday, we have some chilly showers. Temperatures are going to be in the upper 50s on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Cloudy skies, some rain chances. Doesn't look like a good Thursday. <laughs> and then Friday and Saturday, it's, it's kind of give and take. So 
Friday and Saturday are actually looking yeah. much better. Makes you appreciate those beautiful days we had back in April, right? Yeah, it really so, does. Absolutely. Uh, we'll get back to that. And we did need the rain, so we'll take that. Absolutely. Time this morning is 6.09, and every morning we bring you weather and traffic together right here. And let's take a look outside right now and see what's going on. Clean and green, really, on our uh, map this morning. We have no reports of any early problems or delays. Uh, we do have a reminder for you that the Clays Ferry Bridge, uh, they're going to be doing some inspections, and that's set for about 9 to 3 today, and that uh, may very well restore restrict at least one lane. Things could be slow there. Uh, they're also doing some repair work there. And then later in the week, some projects uh, to do some repaving and so forth along Man of War. Uh, I'm sorry, I-75 between Man of War and uh, the Athens Boonesboro exit out there. So a few things uh, to have a heads up about this morning, but uh, no reports of any uh, major problems now. Good to go. Good to go, right? A lot more news coming up Tuesday here on WKYT this morning. It's now 610. As investigators continue to investigate the death of Prince, find out what a judge is saying about his estate. And a look at how Indiana is already breaking records ahead of today's presidential primary. Kentucky mornings start here. You're watching WKYT This Morning. Welcome back to WKYT This Morning. Your time is 614. Now, while some presidential hopefuls are looking ahead to Kentucky, the national spotlight is on Indiana today. The state's primary election going on today could help seal the nominations for both the Republican and Democratic presidential front runners. Hannah Daniels has the latest on campaign 2016. Coming off six straight primary wins, Donald Trump says a victory in Indiana will be a cruise crushing defeat. Lion Ted does not have the temperament to be doing this. He is choking like a dog because he's losing so badly. With 57 delegates up for grabs, winning the state puts the GOP frontrunner on track to seal up the Republican nomination. Trump is only 244 delegates away from clinching it. Ted Cruz is hoping a win in Indiana can keep his campaign going through July and the possibility of a contested convention. The entire country is depending on the state of Indiana. On the Democratic side, almost 8,000 supporters showed up at a Bernie Sanders rally in Indianapolis on Monday. Tomorrow, let us see Indiana have the largest voter turnout in their history. While his campaign needs to win more than 50% of the remaining delegates, Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton is already looking past the Indiana primary, saying she will recruit the help of her husband in her administration. I've told my husband he's got to come out of retirement and be in charge of this because, <laughs> you know, he's got more ideas a minute than anybody I know. The next big contest in the presidential race is California on June 7th, when hundreds of delegates are up for grabs. Anna Daniels, CBS News. Turnout has already set records in Indiana with more than 270,000 people casting early ballots. That's nearly 50% more than the state's previous record for early voting in 2008. Now, there will be extra security today at the funeral for six of the eight family members shot and killed in southern Ohio. The service at a church in West Portsmouth is the last of three funerals for members of the Roden family. They were found dead almost two weeks ago at four properties about 80 miles east of Cincinnati. Investigators are calling it a planned attack. There have been no arrests. A judge in charge of the case of a prince's estate says the court has not determined that the music legend didn't have a will, only that none has been found as of yet. Some of Prince's family members attended a hearing yesterday where a Minnesota judge confirmed the appointment of a special administrator to oversee his estate. It is unclear how long it will take to settle Prince's estate. Buy me some peanuts, some Cracker Jacks, and some flares. Check out this video of a soccer stadium in Warsaw, Poland. Fans threw dozens of flares onto the field during the Polish Cup final. The game was interrupted as the thick smoke took over the stadium. Referees had to add 12 minutes of stoppage time at the end of the second half to make up for the interruption. Not a fun game. Your time now is 617. Gas prices are at their highest levels in more than six months. AAA says the national average has remained above $2 per gallon for 40 consecutive days as the price of crude oil rebounds. It jumped 20% just last month. 
Mother's Day is Sunday, so if you need a gift, how about getting your mom this rare McLaren F1? Just 64 of the supercars were made back in the 1990s. Now the manufacturer is selling one they held on to. The 627 horsepower V12 tops out at 240 miles an hour. The price tag is impressive, too. A used F1 recently sold for over $13 million. And forget about looks and personality. A new survey finds that a credit score can impact your attractability. Almost two in five adults in the Bankrate.com survey say knowing someone's credit score would affect their interest in dating that person. Interesting, Bill. <laughs> that is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how romantic that is, but <laughs> just provide your credit score when you give the call. 618 on WKYT this morning. We're just getting started, really, with all the latest news on your Tuesday. So good to have you along as we roll through Derby Week in Kentucky. It's called Slackline, and an American is taking the sport to new heights in an ancient city. That's ahead. Much cooler conditions the next few days. That's what we're going to be talking about and focusing in on. I'm going to have that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. And it's good to have you with us this morning. There is downtown Lexington this morning coming to life just ahead of the early daylight, and it's good to have you along. We have more news coming right up. Welcome back to WKYT this morning. It's early for me sometimes, you know. Get it together here on this here we Tuesday, go. right? It yeah. is 622. Yeah. Former President Bill Clinton will be in Kentucky today campaigning for his wife. And that's what's trending at this hour. Clinton's first stop is to be in Moorhead. He'll then be swinging through Lexington this afternoon about midday at the University of Kentucky before heading on to Louisville. And Senator Bernie Sanders also planning to campaign in Louisville this afternoon and then Lexington tomorrow afternoon. Lexington police are investigating a home invasion on Embry Avenue where a mother says she woke up to find a stranger with a knife in her house. She says the man demanded money and she was able to push him out the door before calling police. 23-year-old Cody Emery was killed when his car was hit by a Lexington fire engine on Manowar near Nicholas Park Drive. Investigators say the fire truck had its lights and sirens on while responding to a call when Emery's car crossed the median and crashed into the fire truck. Let's get a quick check on weather this morning as we go through Derby Week in Kentucky. Here's meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, and all eyes focus in on that Friday and Saturday, hoping for the best. And it is right now that those actually look like the better days. In the forecast, we'll see how that turns out as we get a little bit closer. But that front's moving on out, so the front's taking the heavy rain along with it. However, look at the spin just to the north of us. We're going to get some wraparound moisture. It's going to flow in and bring in a couple of showers here and there. Uh, none of this is really heavy rain, and I'd say the best chance, not the only chance, but the best chance is going to be that I-64 corridor and northbound because these are coming in from the north. Remember, they're light showers as they pass on through, but. The ground's still very well. A lot of us trying to get our, our lawns mowed and uh, trying to get out there to get out to the ball fields, but it's just hard to do it when you have showers and thunderstorms day after day. Temperatures in the 50s this morning. We head off into the afternoon. We'll be at 63 degrees with that shower chance in the forecast. But like I said, remember, there's no widespread weather and, and definitely no severe weather, no strong thunderstorms passing on through. Nothing like that. The focus of the forecast, though, is not so much about the rain. It's about the cold, and you better have your coats ready to go in the next couple of days because here come the 30s in the forecast for a few spots. But how deep into the 30s are we talking about? Are we talking a freeze or a frost? I'm going to show you that coming up in just about 10 minutes. No big deal a few weeks ago, but this is May, <laughs> you know. It's not supposed to be doing this. Uh, all right. Well, it'll be all right. Our time this morning coming up on 625. And a solar powered Swiss made airplane has landed in suburban Phoenix on the last leg of its journey around the world. Yeah, have you changed your mind about riding in this? Uh, let's, uh, we'll just keep seeing how it goes. <laughs> the Solar Impulse 2 landed in Goodyear, Arizona last night after a day long flight from California. Now, after Phoenix, the plane Powered only by the sun, will make two more stops in the United States before crossing the Atlantic Ocean to Europe or northern Africa. And hoping for clear skies. Yes, indeed. And sun, <laughs> right. right? Exactly. <laughs> An American walked a slack line above the ruins around Jerusalem's Tower of David. And the sport is similar to walking a tightrope, only the line of webbing is used, uh, that is used there has more slack in it. Dozens gathered to watch Heather Larson as she balanced her way over the ancient fortifications with the iconic Tower of David looming in the background. As if walking on the narrow strip was not challenging enough, 
Well, she also did the splits. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> just showing off a little. No thanks to that, too, <laughs> right? Lots of amens there. A four-year-old boy has become a viral sensation after bringing the house down at a North Carolina church. Yeah, he was singing a rousing rendition of This Little Light of Mine. You can see the boy singing, dancing, and clapping for a large church audience who just cannot get enough of him. Neither can I. All right. What a he great a, voice. He had a good time. He didn't drop the mic, by Here the he way. Goes. Yeah, he just kind of, when he finishes up, he... Hands it over. <laughs> <laughs> they obviously had a great time at that service. Yeah, he lifts your spirits, doesn't yeah. he? 626 our time on WKYT early on your Tuesday. Good to have you along. WKYT this morning is back with our top stories in a moment. Yeah, controversy at a Kentucky airport involving rapper 50 Cent. That story is new. Coming up on WKYT this morning. Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is $128 million, and Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot is $348 million. Stay with us on WKYT.